Which particular sin will God not forgive? All of our sins are forgiven when we repent and come before Jesus, but there is one sin that, in Jesus' opinion, is beyond redemption and will not be pardoned in this life or the next. You might be surprised to learn that this sin is not the sins we usually think of, even the most serious ones, like murder, betrayal, or idolatry, because in this video, we will discuss an astounding truth. A warning from Jesus that astounded his disciples is still one of the Bible's most enigmatic lessons. The Matthew's Gospel reflects the permanent sin. The story starts with a young man who was blind and mute due to a demon's possession. He was brought before Jesus, and as he did, a crowd watched. At that moment, there was a palpable sense of tension in the air. Then, using the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus freed the young man from the dark power that had imprisoned him. The demons fled, and the man's eyes opened, and he spoke for the first time in years. The people were in awe of this miracle. The Pharisees, who watched with hardened hearts and refused to acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit, started whispering among themselves, loaded with venom, this man casts out demons by the power of Bezeal, the prince of demons. However, not all of the crowd responded in this way. The Pharisees rejected Jesus and accused Satan of being the source of his miracle, which they said was an authentic act of the Holy Spirit in response to what appeared to be a harmless remark. Jesus said, Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven, knowing that thoughts would not let this moment pass. His words had a gravity that shocked everyone. He went on to say, Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, neither in this age nor in the one to come. The Pharisees' sin was not just a rejection of Jesus, rather, it was a rejection of God. The Spirit of the Holy Jesus made it obvious to them that His power comes from the Holy Spirit, not from Babul. It is not merely an act of ignorance or weakness, it is a rebellion against the light. It is witnessing the action of the Holy Spirit and calling it profane, and it is seeing what is sacred and calling it profane. Denying this obvious fact caused the Pharisees to not only reject Jesus, but also openly curse the Spirit that leads and maintains them. The same Spirit that descended upon him at his baptism led his ministry and now worked through his miracles. The reason this sin is so terrible is not because God does not want to forgive, but rather because the person who committed it has reached a point where they are unable to recognize the good that they have done. They have closed their hearts so tightly that grace cannot penetrate. Jesus said that there comes a terrifying reality where the human heart can become so hardened that there is no more room for repentance. This act is more severe than any other sin because it touches the very essence of the plan of salvation. It is as if by rejecting the Spirit one closes the doors to the forgiveness and grace that it offers. When someone reaches this stage, it's not that God stops forgiving, rather, it's because their own rejection and unbelief have sealed their heart, making it impossible for them to receive forgiveness. Throughout history, many people have spoken against Jesus, misunderstood him, or even rejected him, but they have still found their way to repentance. Jesus went on to explain that while words against him, the Son of Man, might be forgiven, words against the Holy Spirit will not. This distinction is important to remember because the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us of sin, leads us to repentance, and reveals God's truth to us. Blasphemy against the Spirit is rejecting the one and only thing that can bring about repentance. It's like shutting off the lone light in a dark room and leaving it completely black. Jesus makes a specific gesture to emphasize how serious his statements are. Speaking ill of the Son of Man is forgiven, but speaking ill of the Holy Spirit is not. God's grace is not limited to the past, it extends to every day. Every morning is a chance to live in accordance with God's will and to let go of the past. Restitution is a path of trust and surrender. Life today in the freedom that Christ has given you. View yourself not through the lens of failure, but through the lens of redemption. It's not about acting as though you've never fallen, but rather allowing God to utilize your fall for His glory. Every scar and every wound becomes a testament to God's grace and a symbol of His love. Never give up. Remember, you are not alone, so do not stay in the dark, even if it seems like all is lost. We've discussed the one irreversible sin, 
but you also need to know about the seven categories of people who will not be saved. Click on the video that is currently playing to learn about the seven groups of people who will not be allowed to enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is with you, ready to write a new chapter in your life. Just take his hand and let him lead you to a new beginning. It is crucial that you pay close attention and consider whether you could belong to any of these groups of people. Thank you for coming, and may God continue to bless you.